Well, guess what? We're still at the Great Western Steam Up at the Nevada State Railroad Museum, Carson City, Nevada. There was just so much to see and do out here. Oh, this was Man. such a, a great event. A grand time. Anyway, this week we're going to be looking at their turntable. Oh, I love those things. Yeah, and it's an A-frame gallows turntable. And some people would say, well, a gallows turntable has four legs and this is an A-frame turntable. But a lot of people say, no, this is an A-frame gallows turntable. Well, whatever it is, it's darn cute. It's neat. <laughs> Now, because these things were made out of wood and they were built 150 years ago, none of them survive. Oh, I can see why. Yeah, so there's a, there's a, there's a few of them around, but they're all recreations like this one. Now, it's interesting to note that there's no support structure at the edge of the turntable pit here. Oh, there isn't. There's just a cement shelf there. Oh, my. And on a more modern turntable, a steel girder turntable, there would be a rail laid right along here because the weight of the locomotive and everything is carried from the ends of the turntable. With an A-frame turntable or a gallows turntable, the weight is carried on a mechanism at the very center of the turntable, and the ends are just free-floating. Oh my goodness, kind of like a lazy Susan. Kind of like a lazy Susan. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why they keep calling Susan lazy. I don't know. <laughs> just something going on there. <laughs> Anyway, because of this design, notice that the far end of the turntable here is just floating in space. Yes. There's no. Tur if you ran a locomotive off the end there, it'd just drop like two or three feet straight down because the end of the turntable bridge just ends, and there's no there's no pit at that side of the turntable. Don't need one. Now notice that there's a little section just over here, a little short rail section that's been built up to the height of the turntable pit. Right. And I wondered what that was, but that's for their little shop switcher. Oh. So when they're moving around a, a non-operational steam engine, then that gives them a place to pull the little switcher off and then turn the locomotive on the turntable. I see. So it's uh, it's very functional. But you can see that because of the design of the turntable, they've had to build that height up right there mm. for that little pad for the shop switcher. And also notice that there are four rails laid here on the turntable bridge. Oh, there are. Because it's for it's dual gauge. So the outside set of rails here are standard gauge. And the inside set of rails here are three feet apart for, for turning three-foot gauge well, locomotives. Well, they'd have to make sure those things line up or you'd have a mess. Oh, absolutely. So, the, and there's the problem. See, normally when you're doing dual gauge, it's like this. Right. Where there's, there's a common rail to one side over here and both gauges use that. And then three feet away from that is the, the three-foot gauge rail and then at four feet eight and a half inches from the common rail is the standard gauge rail right and that way you can run dual gauge and you only have to lay three rails there you go but there would be a problem on a turntable yes i i've looked at that <laughs> i was like oh because once you turn this thing around and face it the other way the common rails on the wrong side and if you try pulling off the turntable, it's just going to derail. There'll be a lot of noise and <laughs> smoke and... Uh, and gravel going yes, around and right. somebody's going to get fired. Right. So you have to put the, the locomotive, the three-foot gauge locomotive has to be right in the very center of the bridge so that when you turn the whole thing around, the rails line up at both ends of the bridge. Wow. So that has to be done with using four rails instead of three. I see. So you can clearly see that in this shot here, how the four rails line up, and they will line up even if you turn the bridge all the way around. Mm. So that's the, that's the purpose of having the four rails. But then that, that begs the question, how do you turn three rail uh, dual gauge into four rail? And this is, this is a thing called a transition track. And normally it's designed to move the locomotive from one side to the other so that the common rail switches 
from left to right or right to left. And that is accomplished by placing a guardrail here against the narrow gauge and that will ride against the back side of the wheel flange and that pulls the narrow gauge equipment over and then that aligns with uh, the, the, the narrow gauge here. And you can see that right there in the middle uh, it, there's four rails. Right. So you just cut it off right there and that's how you get onto and off of the turntable bridge. So you can see here in this shot these are all of the approach tracks to the turntable and they have half of a transition track. They bring the locomotive out to the very center and then that way the narrow gauge locomotives can pull onto the turntable bridge from the middle instead of from one side. You know, I wonder how many derailments they had before they figured all that out. Oh yeah, and how many people lost uh, their jobs. Fingers, yeah. And, and people drank a lot back then, so that... I that. could almost take up <laughs> drinking just watching them because that takes quite a bit of skill. Yeah, trying to figure all this stuff out, but... but that's that's science. You 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 nibble away at things and you figure out the engineering by by making mistakes and then getting it right. <laughs> there you go. That's a good philosophy. Necessity may be the mother of invention, but screwing around is the dad. Yes. Now because this is supported in the very center, it's critical to get the locomotive to the very center so that the ends of the turntable bridge are floating. Right. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to turn it at all. So you very, very carefully pull the locomotive on there, and then somebody has to watch the edges of the, the bridge, the ends of the, the turntable bridge, and see when they're both floating above the ends of the pit, and therefore the entire locomotive is, is uh, suspended by the very center of the yes. turntable bridge, and therefore it's completely balanced. Now there also has to be a locking mechanism here to keep the whole thing from turning while the locomotive is in motion and it's just that plate right there. It just sits between the rails and you slide that down into the gap and that will prevent the turntable bridge from turning. Oh. And then you just slide it out of the way when you're ready to grab a hold of the turntable and uh, they refer to this as an Armstrong turn pit uh, no, <laughs> for, for the obvious reason here. But several strong people can just grab a hold of a 15-ton locomotive and spin that sucker around. Isn't that fun? Wow. Be because it's all perfectly balanced on those center wheels. Oh, man. Isn't that neat? That's really cool. And then someone has to grab that plate and slide it back into the gap again to prevent the turntable bridge from moving. Ah. Now, this is uh, Gray Wolf on Steve's old ON3 railroad, which he has now dismantled. Mm -hmm. But he had a gallows turntable up here at the old Durango mine. Mm. Wasn't that a neat thing? Oh, it was. And he's been dismantling this railroad and selling off the structures and the bits and pieces. But there's the gallows turntable at the old Durango mine. Oh my goodness, and you can kind of see how that works. Yeah, and so in this case we can get a little better look at how the spider and everything worked because he built it completely to prototype practices. The turntable is completely built from scratch. You know, even those turnbuckles that you see there are built totally from scratch. Isn't that amazing? He just used plastic nut bolt and washer castings. Everything else is scratch built. Oh my. And because Steve still has this turntable, we were able to go over to his house and he showed us how the that center pivot at the middle of the turntable, the spider, how he built that and how that whole mechanism works. <laughs> so those are Central Valley HO? Yeah, originally HO wheels from, you know, 30 odd years ago. Yeah. So you can kind of see how he built this. He used HO axles and wheels and then built this brass framework to hold that. And then that rides on the bottom of the turntable bridge. He's got this brass plate with a brass ring around it. And the, and the wheels, uh, the HO scale wheels, ride on that ring. Oops, we lost an axle.
and then the other ring is right here. may not have been prototypical, but I put the outer ring and those wheels. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I don't know if they ever did that or not. The well, the prototype for this, I think, was just a 50-foot turntable. Yeah. And this one is a 60-foot turntable, and so at 60 feet, or 65 feet, I don't remember, it needed that outer ring. Yeah, because like the one at Carson, if they get the locomotive in the center, then everything mm -hmm. just balances and it's all just being supported here. And as long as everything's supported on the spider, you can just grab a hold of the levers and turn it. Well, see a 50 foot turntable is only that long, and so that spider can carry it. Yeah, now how did you get power to the track then? Well, you have a split ring up here. So, okay. So the pit is divided here and here. And and then the power's coming in through yeah, these wheels. Yeah, it comes in through the wheels. And see, there's your little wire yeah. right there. Okay. And as there's no tracks coming in from here or from there, your split ring is not interfering. As Steve has been selling off all the bits and pieces of the railroad, so far there have been no takers for this turntable. Really? Well, uh, there's a lot of people doing standard gauge 3 rail, and they want a lot of this stuff. And there's people doing ON30, and they want some of this stuff. But this is ON3, and there's just not that many takers for it. Oh. Well, hopefully people have found this informative. I hope so. Uh, years ago, I built one of these turntables for my HO railroad in dual gauge, and it took me forever to figure it out. Oh, I imagine. So I thought, you know, that's what people need is a video explaining all of this, because it needs some splaining. Well, and it makes it easier for me to understand how it works. Yep. Anyway, if you're not a subscriber or member to the channel, you can achieve both by clicking on the upcoming blue button just about now. Well, we're not sure how you found this hopefully informative video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you here on Sunday, and we'll still be here at the steam up. Right. See ya. Bye-bye. <laughs>